everybody? Today we are shot taking at Parks Casino. For the first time ever, I'm going to be playing 10-10 No Limit. The highest I've ever played prior is 2-5, so I'm super excited. I'm going to be sitting down with 2,500 bucks and we're just gonna see how this goes. So wish us luck. All right, so the first interesting hand we have here is four six of diamonds. There was a limp in early position. We had raised over the limp and the small blind had called. We pick up on the flop here where we flopped in open-ended. The limper checks. We bet 40 bucks here with our open-ended straight draw, backdoor flush draw. The small blind folds. And then the early position player takes a second and thinks before raising to 110. Uh, this is quite interesting. I think they can have some like ace five suited, some pairs, some flush draws, but the flush draws I think mostly just call. But given my hand strength, I definitely have to call, so I throw in the 110 total. We go to a turn, which is interesting. It's the queen of diamonds. My opponent takes a second, thinks, and then fires out 160 bucks. Now we picked up even more equity with the flush draw here, so we are definitely not going anywhere. I did think about the benefits of raising for a second, but I was like, mm, I don't think this is a good idea, especially when they check raise this type of flop and continue. So I just throw in the call. And then we go to the river, which is a six of clubs. Not what I was looking for. My opponent checks. I do contemplate maybe betting, because I think that they would continue to bet their made flushes on this river. But I kind of chicken out, and I check, and I lose to pocket nines here. The next interesting hand we have is the ace four of clubs. We have a, another limp in this hand in early position. I make it 40, and this is friggin' crazy. Everyone basically calls. We go seven ways to the flop here. Only the person who folded under the gun is not in this hand. And I'm like, uh, okay, we need to smash this board. <laughs> Otherwise, we are going into a pretty serious check fold here. Uh, yeah, so we go to the flop end as far as smashing that board goes. Uh, <laughs> we flop the joint, all clubs. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. I was like, really? And I bet 40 bucks here, which looking at it now is a little small, uh, especially considering everybody who called. But, you know, uh, I guess we're not going to lose everybody, but everyone's like snap folding. I'm like, oh my gosh, do not dare everyone fold. Thankfully, we do get one call with the uh, early position limper there, and then they check. And of course, I'm going to continue to bet here. The five doesn't really change too much. They don't have queens, jacks, queen five, jack five doesn't really seem to make sense. Pocket fives maybe, but just pretty unlikely. We bet 120 US dollars here. Our opponent thinks for a second and to my sadness they just fold but we do pick up a nice pot here so can't complain and then we get moved to a new table here actually because we were at a must move table and this is like the first hand i got dealt here this ace king and not too much is really going to happen here i am raising it up to 80 over the 20 to my right uh, which is an under the gun straddle and then uh, at this point honestly my nerves are starting to go away a little bit again this is my first time shot taking playing 10 10 no limit so there was definitely some nerves i was getting adjusted and by this table move uh, a couple of up and down pots whatever happened i'm starting to feel like i'm in a little bit of a rhythm I'm like okay like this is good let's do this and then just as that settles somebody to my left goes oh by the way we are playing 10 10 20 at this table mandatory under the gun uh just didn't want you to fold your hand i'm like oh boy this game just got bigger 
Here we have Jax, and we're picking up on the flop. I didn't have my phone out in time, but this is a big pot. So the I raised to 50, the small blind made it 200 pre-flop. I thought for a second, I called, and then we came to the flop, queen, eight, deuce, queen. And on the flop, it goes check, check. And then we get to the turn, it's a queen. They bet 250 bucks. I like this turn card because now I feel much, much better about my hand. So I'm definitely not folding. I'm just gonna call here. And then the river comes a seven. And my opponent checks. And now I take a second here and I think, and I feel like at this point, I definitely have the best hand. I think it's quite likely my opponent could have ace king, but I still have to bet. I think they have like 1.6K behind at this point. I bet 600 into a $900 pot, hoping they get a call. Unfortunately, they fold pretty quickly, but we do pick up a nice pot here. Now we look down at ace five of clubs. We are in the under the gun straddle right now for 20 bucks. And it's going to fold to the small blind who makes it 50 bucks. And then the big blind here decides to call. And I think about just calling and seeing a flop, but I was like, man, you know what? I, I think I can play this hand aggressive here. So I decide on raising and I make it 200 here. I think my hand can play well post-flop. I think I want to be doing some raising here. And I also wanted to start like raising when I'm in the straddle a little bit. The small blind folds and the big blind does not take too long before folding as well. So we do pick up a pot here. Which is nice. Stack a couple chippies. And then the very next hand, we look down in the big blind at pocket jacks. And this time my phone is out. I'm ready for this hand. And the button folds as it folds around to them. And then here, the small blind actually ends up raising it to 60 bucks. Uh, I know I'm gonna be re-raising here. I would like to push the straddle out of there, play in position versus the small blind. Even though the small blind does have a stronger range, I still think that I need to put some more money in this pot. So I make it 240 over their $60 raise. They think for a little bit here before tossing in the call. And now we have a nice pot here going to the flop, 500 in the middle. And it is four, four, six. My opponent very quickly checks. And I'm definitely betting here. I don't want to just check and let some high cards get there. The question is how much. And in real time, I decided to bet 400 bucks, which is a little more than two thirds the pot. And my opponent quickly folds. I don't know that I needed to bet that big, precisely. But if they have tens and nines, they're not folding or eights either. So I dig it, I dig it. And then we look down at pocket nines on the button in this hand. The cutoff raises to 60 bucks. Remember, this is 10, 10, 20. They raise it up to 60. And I decide to make the call here on the button for the 60 bucks. And then we go heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace, three, five, rainbow. And again, my opponent here, pretty quick with the checks checks this board and I think that when they check here they could just have some uh, Broadway cards that missed they could have some pairs that they are looking to pot control maybe jacks tens so those are pairs better than mine sevens eights sixes or uh, I am beating so kind of a multi-purpose bet here deny equity from high cards get value from lower cards maybe start setting up to bluff the tens and jacks my opponent quickly checks and then now i do take a second and think about this one i'm like how often are they just pot controlling some weak ace x here i'm not really sure because in tournaments they're usually getting bet a lot cash games might be a little bit different 
but ultimately I do decide to bet 120 bucks here on this turn. I didn't want to bet too big so that sevens and eights could still call. I thought the turn was going to allow sevens to be calling more. Maybe even jacks and tens fold at that point, but it does go check check. My opponent quickly shows ace queen and I'm like, dang, really? And we lose this pot. <laughs> Alrighty, here's another one I did not pick up until some action had already happened. I raised to 50 bucks in the cutoff, the button, 3 bet to 200 bucks. And I remember in this moment just like, yeah, man, I don't know what to do with Ace King in, in cash games. Am I trying to get this in or am I just like calling and taking it post flop? Uh, here, I decided, okay, we're like super mega deep. I'll just take it to the streets, call the 200. And then the flop comes out Queen 10. Three. Queen 10 3. And I'm going to be checking to the initial razor here. And then he bets out 130. Very, very callable size for us. So I'm happy to see that. I'm like, you better put a jack out there, dealer. And uh, take a second here. Toss in the call for the 130. We go into the turn. Not a jack. Ugh. Four of spades. At this point, it's like, okay. Man, please just check, you know what I mean? Have something like Ace Jack that you want to check here. And uh, let's get to showdown. But my opponent on the button here is like, nah, son, we got a bet. And they put out a bet of 440 bucks, which I think is just too big for us to call here. I really don't know anything about this opponent. So unfortunately we have to release, or we decide to release. And we lose this pot here. The old ace king. Next hand, we have uh, pocket fives in the small blind. And I had pocket fives a lot this day, and I was not hitting any sets. I remember thinking, oh wow, I'm gonna smash a set in this hand. I just like had this feeling. It was funny and it was stupid at the same time. Uh, but then the uh, button calls, I check my small blind. Big blind makes it 80 bucks. And there are two calls, and it gets around to me in the small blind. Like I said, I knew I was smashing a set in this hand. I was like, oh baby, this is gonna be so sick. I put out the call, 480 total, and we go four ways to the flop. Ladies and gentlemen, the flop comes. Five, six, deuce. We hit our set, how sick is that? Uh, I don't know, crazy, but we decide to start with a check here. Definitely thinking the initial raise is going to bet. Unfortunately, it checks all the way around, and the turn is a seven of hearts. And at this point, I'm not folding. I'm going to control the size of the pot. I decide to check. I know I'm check calling. The other two opponents check to the late position player who thinks for a minute. I might be getting a little nervy at this point. I'm like, what's this guy going to do? But I know I'm calling, so it doesn't matter. They bet 230 bucks. I double check just to uh, maybe make them think that I'm on, on a flush draw. And then we call the 230. The other opponents uh, very quickly fold and we are going to the river with 810 bucks in the pot. Pair the board! Oh my gosh, another heart. I'm like, this is the worst, man. How am I gonna know I'm gonna hit a set and then have this type of board run out? <sighs> so anyway, we check, and the uh, late position player who had bet the turn thinks for a minute. I'm trying to get a read, deciphering the situation here, trying to decide what I'm going to do if they bet, and hoping they bet small. They bet here, though, 340 bucks into the 800 some dollar pot. It's not bad. I don't have to be right too often here. I think to make this call and I actually pull out some chips here trying to see how much they're paying attention to me and uh, they're pretty stoic and uh, not really giving away much I know I'm not raising here I know I'm just contemplating a call so I take my time and I'm just like man I knew I should have just donk jammed all in on the flop and won this hand <laughs> Oh, but yeah, man, such a tough spot. And they didn't go with a big sizing, which I might have called a big sizing more than this small sizing. This just seems so value betty. And I wasn't sure if this was a good player, but 
ultimately, I sigh, blah, blah, and uh, decide that, okay, I'm gonna release. We look down at Ace, 10 of spades here in the cutoff. I raise it up to 40 bucks. And the button here calls, which we have had a couple hands versus this player up to this point. And this is another spot. We are going heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace, seven, three. We got top pair, decent kick, backdoor flush draw. And out of position here, I'm taking a trick from uh, the ace queen player who pot controlled. And I decided to pot control this flop as well. And check. Turn comes an eight. I'm going into Mr. Trappity Trap Trapper mode. The button bets 60 bucks. So I know I'm not folding here. Oh, please sell that I have a draw. <laughs> Looking at my cards again. So yep, I am calling the 60 bucks here. And we're going to the river. I'm gonna continue to sell this story of I'm weak. Hope that they bet, maybe catch some bluffs from like King Queen, maybe some um, other weak suited connected hands, something that they might've called with under pairs. And it does work because our opponent here, uh, opponent, opponent is going to bet 130 bucks. Pretty easy call here for me. Toss it in. Our opponent confidently shows ace five and I don't blame them actually. But we do pick up a nice little pot here with the ace 10 of spades. It was a very up and down session for us. And in this hand, we look down in the small blind at the old ace king, big slick. We got uh, 1700 in our stack at the start of this hand. There's a raise in middle position to 30 bucks. And then very quickly, it is re-raised to 100 bucks. We're in the small blind with ace king. I'm out of position. I know I want to re-raise. I make it 310 here. I think I could have made it uh, 400 some bucks to be completely honest, but I chose to make it 310. My stack was getting a little bit more shallow, so I didn't want to raise as big, leave me some room so that I could play post flop if it came to it. And then the big blinds thinking here, I'm like, bro, what are you thinking about? I was like, don't you dare re-raise. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with Ace-King here. We were just talking about that earlier. I don't know what to do with Ace-King. This is deep in cash games. Uh, but bang. Our big blind opponent. Uh, five bets to 760 bucks. I'm like, what is going on here? This is the opponent that uh, was playing a few hands versus me. Definitely seemed competent at this point. And definitely seemed aggressive capable. The opponent who raised it to 100 across the table from us here is huffing and puffing and thinking about what they want to do with their hand. And at this point, I'm going through a million thoughts in my head. Like, okay, if this opponent in a late position is huffing and puffing over this hand, they don't have like pocket nines. They don't have like seven, eight suited. Uh, they don't have like ace jack. They have a strong hand, which makes me think that some of my outs here might be dead and they have some Broadway cards. Eventually they do fold and now it's back to me. And man, I'm like, are you actually serious here? Cause again, I'm not really sure what to do with Ace King here this deep in a cash game. I made it 310. We got a uh, cold five bet and there's 1200 in the pot. I've got 1400 behind. My opponent could have ace king. I think they're very capable of that. They could have kings. They could have queens, maybe queens flats. I'm not giving them credit for jacks or tens or any nonsense like that. Um, and then man, I'm gonna be completely honest. At this point, I'm starting to think, okay, I'm hoping we're chopping, but I'm also starting to think, man, this could be a sick pot for the vlog. I'm, I'm being super real there. If we get this in, uh, ace, king, ace, king, whatever. If we get it in versus kings and we bank an ace, like that's glorious. Uh, I'm thinking a gazillion things in this moment. And eventually, uh, I just get to the point, man, where it's like, I have ace, king. The guy in late position, I know, folded some Broadway cards. So I think it's a bit less likely that the cold five better in the big blind has aces kings 
and it could much more likely have a hand just like mine ace king or queens because i don't think we're getting huffing and puffing in late position from the other player with queens so yeah really really tough spot but eventually i decide nah son i am not backing down and i plop in my all in they snap call i'm like oh my gosh this is not good and then i'm like how many times you want to run it and they're like once i'm like i'm done <laughs> like they for sure have aces when they say once so clear i've seen it so many times already and the board runs out booty just straight nothing i flip over my hand my opponent shows two black aces i'm like wow well here you go and that's it that's our first 10 10 session destroyed man destroyed but it was a great time man and it had to happen at some point take it my first shot at 10 10 the games were great they were not difficult games and definitely soft and very beatable what's going on everybody so we just dusted off our stack um with ace king man it was so weird dude i don't know what to do with ace king deep stack and cash games i literally have no idea what to do with the hand i had another spot earlier with ace king in this game where I could have like four betted, I didn't. I just called and it was versus the same player, that hand that you just saw with the ace king. Are we getting this in or not? Like, it, it's weird, man, I'm all over the place, but I ended up getting it in, kind of thinking that, okay, this guy could have like queens for sure, kings, maybe a big and ace, and like, just has aces, dude, just has aces first 10-10 session we just get dusted off for 250 big blinds not at that pop but you know we bought him for 2500 so yeah i don't know man sometimes this is the way it goes this is a uh, a lesson learned you know and it was a shot take so we're fine it hurts you know for a second but it is what it is i was prepared to lose this money so uh thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time Everybody, thanks for making it to the end of my video no one does that do they? All right, look, I respond to comments, so please leave a comment below the description and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, check out some of my last videos here and don't forget to hit the subscribe button here. All right, my name is Drew. Peace out. Catch up with you later.